Second letter of St. Clair to St. Agnes of Prague. From Clare, and where this little servant of the poor ladies and one of no particular use comes this greeting. All good things be yours, Lady Agnes, daughter of the King of Kings, handmaid of the Lord of Lords, most worthy spouse of Jesus Christ, and on that very account, Queen and Lady beyond compare. And may yours be the grace to live forever in most high poverty. I render thanks to the giver of all grace from whom we do hold that every best gift and every peerless favor flow out because he has adorned you with so much distinction of virtue and caused you to shine out with the signs of such perfection that you have become worthy to be recognizable as a loving imitator of him, perfect father that he is even to the point that his eyes see no imperfection in you. This is that perfection by which this king will unite you to himself in the heavenly bride chamber, where he reigns all glorious on a throne encrusted with stars. Yes, and this is because laughing away the exalted rank of an earthly kingdom and offers of an imperial marriage which you have held as of small account, instead preferring the adornments of most holy poverty. In a spirit of great humility and ardent love, you have planted your footsteps in his, the one to whom you have been found the one to whom you have been found worthy to be joined in spiritual wedlock. For certain I know very well that you are indeed decked out with many virtues, and I do not wish to weigh you down with an excess of words, even though I quite understand that you would consider nothing as superfluous were it possible for you to draw some consolation from it. But because this one thing only is necessary, I do want to bear witness to you and to admonish you for the love of him to whom you have offered yourself as a holy and pleasing sacrifice, that you be mindful of your contract, so that like another Rachel, remaining always set upon your chosen way of setting out, you may hold fast to what you are holding now and go on doing what you are doing, not failing to give it your full energy, rather with lively peace, with lively pace and light step and unstumbling feet, so that your own herring along does not allow of any dust gathering. Go forth swiftly, securely rejoicing, and believing no one, agreeing with no one who would want you to turn back from this going forth, or who would put a stumbling block in your way against that perfection to which the Spirit of the Lord has invited you. As you render back to the Most High One, the vows which the Spirit of the Lord has inspired you to pledge. But now, in all of these, that you may walk more securely along the way of the commandments of the Lord, follow the advice of our Venerable Father, our brother Elias, the Minister General. For more than the advice you could get from others, I propose to you his counsel as dearer than that of any others. So, if anyone else should tell you something different or give you counter advice or otherwise suggest anything which would hinder your perfection, that is something to be recognized as contrary to your holy vocation, you can go ahead and pay such a person respect while nonetheless remaining determined not to follow his advice. Rather, as a poor virgin, embrace the poor Christ. Look at him who was that contemptible, and this for your sake, and follow him as yourself made contemptible in this world for his sake. Your spouse, the most beautiful of the sons of men, made himself on your account the most despised of men, scorned, smitten, wounded all over his body, and dying amidst the, the agonies of the cross. O oh, most noble queen, look at him, Keep on gazing upon him, 
contemplate him, yearning to imitate him. For if you suffer with him, you will reign with him. Grieving with him, you will come to rejoice. Dying along with him on the cross of anguish, you will come to possess heavenly mansions amid the splendors of the saints. With your name written in the book of life, and you will come to be called forever glorious by man. Then, instead of earthly and transitory things, you will have the glory of the heavenly kingdom. And this always and forever and ever, possessing everlasting happiness instead of earthly and transitory things, living that life without end. Goodbye, dear sister, and my lady too, because of him who is your Lord and spouse. In your devout prayers to him, please also commend me to him, along with my sisters, who all of us rejoice in the good things of the Lord, which by his grace he is bringing about in you. Remember us in every way to your sisters too.